Hey there, fellow time traveler. Do you remember those days when black and white television sets were all the rage, and the airwaves were filled with stories that could transport you to another world? If you do, then you might just have a treasure trove of memories from 1965, the year when The Collector made its debut. Ah, the nostalgia. So, did you watch The Collector back in those days? It's a classic that has left an indelible mark on the hearts of many. Whether you were captivated by the enigmatic characters, held your breath during suspenseful moments, or simply savored the golden era of storytelling, we'd love to hear your cherished recollections. Think back to your favorite moments, the characters that stole your heart, and the experiences that kept you glued to the screen. Were you enthralled by the eerie suspense, or perhaps you were drawn to the intricate web of emotions woven throughout the narrative? Whatever it may be, those memories are like precious gems, waiting to be unearthed. Now, as we embark on this journey through the annals of television history, let's dive into some fascinating random facts about the collector that you may not know. Who knows, you might just stumble upon a detail that even the most die-hard fans missed. So, grab a cup of tea or your favorite snack, and let's take a trip down memory lane together. Get ready to be amazed by the behind-the-scenes secrets, trivia, and quirks that made The Collector a timeless classic. Stay tuned for more intriguing tidbits right here. In August 1975 interview with Royal S. Brown, composer Bernard Herrmann revealed that he was supposed to be the composer for the 1965 movie The Collector, but William Wyler eventually hired Morris Jarr instead. Wyler supposedly said, I don't want to use a hitchman. This decision marked an interesting turn in the film's production, as Herrmann had a notable collaboration history with Alfred Hitchcock, and Wyler's choice to go in a different direction brought a unique musical perspective to the movie. The Collector also gained notoriety for its influence on notorious serial killer Robert Berdella. Berdella cited the film as a key inspiration for his crimes. The dark and disturbing themes of obsession and captivity depicted in the movie seem to have resonated with him in a chilling way, shedding light on the eerie impact that certain films can have on individuals. Before Samantha Egger was cast as Miranda, several actresses were considered for the part, including Julie Christie, Susan Plachette, and Sarah Miles. The casting process played a crucial role in shaping the final version of the film with Egger ultimately delivering a compelling performance that added depth to the character. The Collector, directed by William Wyler and based on John Fowle's novel, remains a thought-provoking and disturbing cinematic exploration of obsession and captivity. From the decision to hire Morris Jarre as the composer to its unsettling influence on Robert Berdella and the casting choices that led to Samantha Egger's memorable portrayal, the film continues to leave its mark on the world of cinema. In 1965, the movie The Collector had an interesting behind-the-scenes fact. It was originally planned to be made in black and white. This decision was likely influenced by the desire to create a specific atmosphere or mood for the film. However, as production progressed, it was ultimately shot in color. This change in color might have been a deliberate choice to enhance the visual impact of the movie or due to budget considerations. Regardless of the reason, The Collector remains a notable film of its time, known for its chilling story and performances. Natalie Wood and Tuesday Weld both declined the role of Miranda Gray, a pivotal character in the film. Their refusal opened the door for Samantha Egger to take on the role, which she portrayed convincingly, earning her an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. This casting decision played a significant role in shaping the film and the performances of its lead actors. Furthermore, the British mod group, The Jam, drew inspiration from The Collector for their song The Butterfly Collector, which served as the B-side to their hit single Strange Town, reaching the 15th spot on the UK charts. This connection between a 1965 film and a 1979 song by The Jam showcases the enduring influence of the movie on popular culture. In conclusion, The Collector from 1965, though originally planned in black, and White was filmed in color and featured Samantha Egger in a role turned down by Natalie Wood and Tuesday Weld. Additionally, it left a lasting mark on the music world with the jam's song The Butterfly Collector. This film continues to be remembered and celebrated for its contributions to cinema and music. 
in the 1965 movie The Collector, directed by William Wyler and starring Samantha Egger and Terrence Stamp. There are some interesting behind-the-scenes stories. One notable fact is that Kenneth Moore was originally cast in the role of Samantha Egger's secret lover, but all of his scenes were cut from the final print. This decision by the director left Moore's entire co-starring role on the cutting room floor, much to Wyler's regret. Wyler himself expressed disappointment, saying, Some of the finest footage I ever shot wound up on the cutting room floor, including Kenneth's part. Moreover, Terrence Stamp, who played one of the lead roles in the film, revealed that Wyler had a particular approach to working with Samantha Egger. According to Stamp, Wyler wouldn't allow Egger to leave the set during the day, and he insisted that she ate alone during lunch breaks. Stamp recalled Wyler whispering to him one day on set, I know this looks cruel, but we're going to get a great performance out of her. This anecdote sheds light on Wyler's dedication to achieving the best possible performance from his actors. These behind-the-scenes insights into the collector offer a glimpse into the filmmaking process and the challenges faced by both the director and the cast. Despite the cuts and unconventional methods, the film remains a notable entry in cinematic history. In the 1965 movie The Collector, there's an interesting behind-the-scenes story involving actress Samantha Egger and actor Terrence Stamp. While filming, Egger was unhappy with Stamp's cold treatment towards her. However, it turns out that Stamp was following director William Wyler's instructions to stay in character. Stamp later revealed that Wyler wanted him to withdraw any friendship with Egger to enhance the film's tension. He didn't want Egger to have anyone to talk to except her coach, isolating her for a more authentic performance. Another noteworthy aspect of the film's production is the involvement of writer Terry Southern. During a period of creative uncertainty, there were concerns about censorship affecting the film's ending. In the original novel, it ends bleakly with the kidnapper getting away with his crimes. Southern was brought in to devise a happy ending where the tables would turn, and Miranda would keep her captor as her prisoner. However, despite Southern's efforts, in compensation, none of his writing made it into the final film. The movie retained a somewhat less bleak but still somber ending. Furthermore, according to author John Fowles, the original cut of The Collector exceeded three hours in duration. This suggests that there was a substantial amount of footage that didn't make it into the final release, emphasizing the complexity of the film's production. In summary, the making of The Collector was marked by tension on set as actors followed the director's instructions, an attempt to alter the ending to appease censors, and a longer initial cut that was eventually trimmed down. These behind-the-scenes details provide insight into the challenges and decisions that shaped the film. In the 1965 movie The Collector, directed by William Wyler and based on John Fowle's novel, there are some interesting behind-the-scenes details that add to the film's history. Kenneth Moore, an actor in the film, claimed that he briefly appeared in the background of one shot in the final print of the movie. This could have given him grounds to sue the film company, but Moore decided against it because of his fondness for director William Wyler. While the film stays faithful to the novel for the most part, there's a scene in the movie that was invented for the screenplay. In this added scene, Miranda tries to get the attention of her neighbor by flooding the bathroom. During the production of the film, there was a period of creative uncertainty, and the filmmakers were concerned about censorship. To avoid the extremely bleak ending of the novel where an innocent girl dies and her kidnapper escapes, Terry Southern was hired to rewrite the script's final stages. He proposed a happy ending where Miranda turns the tables on her captor, Freddy, keeping him as her prisoner instead. However, none of Southern's writing was ultimately used, and the film retained a bleak ending, albeit somewhat less grim than the novel. These details shed light on the complexities of adapting a novel into a film, and the creative decisions that filmmakers make to bring a story to the screen. The Collector remains a noteworthy film from 1965, offering a glimpse into the challenges of translating literature into cinema. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the enigmatic world of the 1965 film, The Collector, I invite you to pause and reflect on the intricate web of emotions and ideas it has woven within you. This cinematic masterpiece, directed by William Wyler, has the power to evoke a spectrum of emotions and ignite the depths of one's soul. Perhaps you've been captivated by the chilling performance of Terence Stamp as Frederick Clegg, or maybe Samantha Egger's portrayal of Miranda Gray has left you with a haunting impression. 
The film's exploration of obsession, isolation, and the human psyche serves as a timeless muse for introspection. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts, your cherished moments, or the lingering questions that the collector has stirred within you. Did you find yourself sympathizing with the captor or the captive? Did the film's thematic depth stay with you long after the credits rolled? Your unique perspective adds to the tapestry of interpretations that make this film endlessly intriguing. Thank you for joining us on this cinematic voyage, exploring the depths of the collector. Your engagement and insights are invaluable as we continue to appreciate the beauty and complexity of this classic. Share your thoughts, spark conversations, and keep the legacy of this film alive. We look forward to hearing your thoughts with warm regards or your fellow film enthusiast.